Hello team, uh, my name is Adrian Iliasiu and I'm an engineer with the DevNet team. In this part of the course, we'll have a look at the, how to access vManage, how to access the sandbox that's running the, our SDN fabric installation that we have ready for you. And we'll also look as the, at the SDN REST API documentation, where you can find it and how it's organized so that you can easily find it and read through it. So before getting actually to this, I want to do a quick recap of what we've accomplished so far. So in the previous lesson, we've seen what an API is, what REST is, and how does it work. And we'd have a, we had a couple of analogies for you that I hope it makes sense. So now we take it to the next level and we start looking at the sandbox SD-WAN um, fabric that we have set up for you and that we're going to use throughout this course. So in order to access it, this is the URL that you would have to navigate to, uh, sandboxsdwan.cisco.com on port 8443. And the username and password is right here. Then the user and the password, Cisco with the capital C123 exclamation mark. Um, things to keep in mind about this is that it's an always on sandbox. It's available 24 seven and that's basically the main reason that we have limited the permissions on the user so that by mistake, uh, you know, if it would be an administrative user, uh, the environment might be destroyed or changed in a way that would uh, make it unavailable. So we limited the permission for this specific user, but don't worry, uh, you will still be able to follow along and do all the tasks throughout this course with, with this user. Um, as you've seen in the initial presentation where we've talked about the sandbox, um, the DevNet sandbox, you can actually reach all the sandboxes at this link. We have a large number of sandboxes. Uh, feel free to go explore. They're all available to you for free. All you need to be is a DevNet member, which is also a free account, and you're good to go start interacting with all these technologies. We think the um, SD1 environment is ideal for you to start playing around, interacting without actually having to deploy a fabric on your own or to rent or to spend any money. So we think that this would be a great place for you to start um, exploring the solution. Let's go and have a look um, at the graphical user interface and walk you around a bit to get comfortable with the dashboard. We're not going to go into a great lot of uh, amount of detail because, like I said, there's other courses that cover the product uh, in a much greater detail, and I recommend you look at those too. But for the purposes of this course, I'm just going to go over the dashboard, make sure you are familiar with, uh, with the main tabs. So once you log in into it, at the sandbox SD-WAN Cisco.com on port 8443, you get access basically to the dashboard. So the dashboard right here is a one pane glass in which you see the status of all your fabric. You see all the alerts, you see all the components, and we think we have captured in this dashboard all the critical information that you need to know once you log in into the, uh, the fabric. So here we can see that we have one vManage server, which is the NMS, the, the NMS part of the solution, and this is actually um, at that URL. Then we have one vBond server right here, one vSmart, and four WAN edges. There are vEdge cloud instances, so keep in mind all of these are virtual devices, there's no hardware. Um, involved here. They're of course running on a UCS infrastructure, but the UCS fabric is based all on software virtual components. So there's no hardware, um, SD-WAN hardware involved in this. Also keep in mind this is a lab environment. So we have only one instance of the uh, vSmart, vBON, and vManage. In a production environment you would want to have uh, redundancy built into the solution, follow best practices, and architect your solution in such a way that is redundant. So this is by no means uh, a recommended way, it's just for the purposes of, uh, of a lab and for you to be comfortable uh, with the solution and start interacting right away. 
Uh, what else we can see here? We can see the reboots that have been taking place in the past 24 hours on any of the components. Uh, we see the certificates, status, if there are any warnings or any invalid certificates. We see that the, we don't have any problem with the certificates right here. And then the control plane status. We can uh, see its status right there. Um, site held view, the transport interface distribution. So these are all the interfaces throughout your fabric, uh, their bandwidth and uh, how they're distributed. The WAN edge inventory, we get here a status of your licenses for your V-edges. So we see here we have four deployed V-edge instances. Um, and then we have quite a large number of licenses here still available to be used for this fabric. Uh, wet edge health and then the transport health also right here. So like I said, the dashboard is pretty much your first point of interaction with vManage and we think we capture uh, all the interesting information for you in, in one place. But once you've seen the dashboard, there are also on the left hand side here several other tabs available for you. So we have the monitor tab. If we go into it, we see the geography option here. So here we'll give you based on the uh, coordinates of the devices that you can specify. So you can nicely spread out your devices on a map and know the locations where they are at based on their uh, geographical coordinates. So in this case, we see that seven of them, all my devices are on the US West Coast here. Um, if I go on the network, I get a list of all the devices that are making uh, part of the fabric. So I can see here my vManage instance, my vSmart, vBond, and then the four vEdges, which are representing my branch, my remote locations, right? So I see here also the system IP. Think of the system IP as a router ID in the Cisco world. So if you're familiar with Cisco uh, technologies, uh, you know what the router ID is. So think of the system IP here in the SD-WAN fabric instance is the same thing, right? So it's uh, a router ID. We see here the device models. Um, it's a vManage, vSmart, and of course the vBond is actually a vEdge cloud that does specific role. It's built for a specific purpose in the fabric. And then the other V edges right here. We have the chassis number um, ID. This will be important as we go through our course. You will see that uh, in a programmatic fashion, you actually access the devices mostly through this ID, which is unique throughout the fabric. Also the system IP, because it's equivalent to a router ID in the Cisco world, should be unique throughout your fabric so you don't cause any, any problems. We also see the state here of all the devices and the reachability, they're all reachable. And we have seven devices in this fabric. Going over to the next tab uh, on the left hand side, we have alarms. So here you get a statistics of all the alarms um, throughout hourly, or you can change on a six hour basis, 12 hours, seven days, or custom, right? So you can have them displayed here. Very verbose, a lot of information here. Um, the same goes with the events and the audit log, who logged in at what time, what they did, what happened throughout the fabric. So in this case, we see authentication succeeded for today uh, when I logged in. Whenever a template, a policy, or any configuration changes are done, they are tracked with the audit log. What's important to keep in mind here is that all these alarms, events, and logs are also available over the REST API. So you can start actually interacting with the API, extracting this data from a third-party solution. So let's say you have a ticketing system or you have a monitoring solution that can actually take advantage of all this information, get it over the API, and then do a specific logic, build a workflow around it, and optimize that workflow. And in the case of an alert, for example, if it's a critical alert, you would maybe want to send a message or open a ticket, or really the use cases are up to you 
and up to your specific workflow and how you see this working for your specific case. Um, ACL log also, if there are any logs for ACLs, we don't have any ACLs configured here, so there's no logs. Uh, moving on to the configuration tab, we get a list of devices. So similar to the monitor devices tab, we get here the VH Cloud devices, chassis number, and we see also a whole list of our licenses that are still available. We see the host name, system IP, and under controllers, we see our vManage, vSmart, and vBond devices. Uh, same thing, system IP, host names, site IDs, and they're all in sync, we can see here. Under certificates is where you would invalidate certificates mostly uh, in case something happens to a site and you need to invalidate the certificate. You have the option here. And also you have the option of generating your CSRs for your servers um, under here for all your vBond, vSmart, and vManage uh, components. Um, so that's managing certificates. Templates, the next step, we see here we have one template. For configuration templates, think of them as pretty much if you're coming from the Cisco world, uh, we've done it. We've configured devices so far, brand new devices, by pretty much copy pasting and changing configuration from one device to another. So template is a similar concept in which you have a template that gets applied to a specific device and enforces that configuration on that device. So for a brand new device, um, that's a very common use case to apply these templates. So in this case, we have one here that we will see as we progress through the course, how we're gonna use it and how we're gonna apply it to specific devices. Keep in mind, there's two types of templates that we have. Uh, there's the feature template, and then there's the device template. The feature template, uh, what the name says is actually you see here we have uh, eight of them. They're templates for specific purposes for your device templates. So let's say you want to configure SNMP communities, or you want to configure a banner like we have here, or you want to configure an interface, a specific interface, you would build a feature template. So if we have a look at the, for example, banner template, if we do view, we see here, very simple, the name, the description, and then the basic configuration, the login banner, and the message of the day banner right here. So this would be one component of your device template. Another one would be, like I said, your SNMP configuration, your NTP server configuration template. So you have these individual pieces that you combine, and you have them then part of a device template that you can, at the end of the day, apply to the devices that you bring online and apply that configuration seamlessly, very quick, so that you don't have to go line by line um, and configure your devices. You just apply the template, and you know that all those configurations got pushed to the device. What's also nice is that you get uh, dynamic parameters in these templates. So for example, for IP addresses on specific VPNs and interfaces, you can specify them at the moment when you apply the template. So let's say your SNMP, NTP, and banner will stay the same, possibly, so you don't need to edit those every time, but the IP address on a specific interface, you need to edit that as you apply it to different devices. So you have that option with templates. And we'll see this as we go forward and we reach our um, stage when we build our first application. Um, using the API. Under policies next, we don't have any policies here uh, yet, and also we don't have any security policies yet enabled in this fabric. If the use case comes around and we have content around this, then we will have um, also security policies and uh, generic policies. So we'll just go to the next step, the tools. You have the option of rediscovering the network here, and you can do operational commands. This user is a limited permission user, like I was saying, so part of this you are not gonna be able to do. Um, but keep in mind that this is just an overview of the dashboard. Under maintenance, we have the software repository tab, so there is where you would 
specify the repository that contains your new images that you want to upgrade to. Then the software upgrade tab is where you actually start the process of upgrading and then device reboot, you can reboot the devices in the fabric. Under administration, very important tab here is settings and this is one of the tabs that you will probably, when you bring up a fabric, will be the first ones that you actually start filling out. Important information here is the organization name. So this is your customer ID, basically the one that you get when you sign up for a service for the Cisco SD-WAN service um, and when you purchase the licenses. So this is based on your organization name and each customer gets a different one. Uh, very important also here is where we specify the VBOND IP address. VBOND has the orchestrator of the fabric has a critical role. So this is a very important field to specify at the beginning when you start building the fabric. And then in this case, controller certificate authorization. We see here that we have manual. So in this lab, we have our own CA server. So we're not integrated with third party Symantec or other providers that basically would automatically generate um, certificates for your VH devices. So what we do here and your um, vManage, vEdge, and uh, vSmart devices, right? So what we do here, we generate our own certificates manually with our own CA server for this uh, specific lab. So these are uh, the most important settings I want to talk about. Uh, very important when you start deploying a new fabric. Manage users, of course, uh, we see here the dominant user, part of the uh, sandbox user group, and because uh, we have restricted permissions with this user, we can actually uh, modify anything in here. And then cluster management, also there's only one instance uh, of vManage. This is where you would define your cluster. And vAnalytics, uh, we don't have enabled vAnalytics for, for this sandbox. Uh, but think of it as providing, once you purchase the license for this, you get unprecedented view into all the logs and analytics of the network, trends, uh, and all of that information that's very useful for an operations, from an operations perspective. Um, all right, so going back to the dashboard, uh, this is how it looks. And keep in mind, what's important also is that all you see here, all the, all the calls, all the um, monitor geography, for example, what happens in the backend is a get call will get sent over the REST API to the backend to the vManage server and will be displayed in here. So the graphical user interface in the backend uses extensively REST API calls. So if you want, you can rebuild your own graphical user interface, right? In this case, if you're not happy for some reason with this, you have the option of building your own graphical interface, your own integrations, and start developing on top of the application and on top of the fabric. 